guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, Empower In. So this was one of the major drug classes that I got a ton of video requests on, which is calcium channel blockers. And I have to say, as a nurse that has been practicing for the last seven years, I really can't remember a day that has gone by where I have not given a calcium channel blocker. So this is a medication that you will see a lot as a nurse. These medications work very well, they're commonly used, and they will be around for a while. So I really hope that I did my best to explain the information in the video in a very easy to understand format. So my team and I had a lot of fun doing the research for this. We had a lot of fun creating questions for you. And so we hope that this video and the additional resources will help you understand calcium channel blockers and help you answer the questions correctly on your test and also maybe on the NCLEX examination. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers. In a human body, the concentration of calcium outside the cell is several thousand much higher than that of inside. Cells have calcium channels embedded in its membrane, which opens up to let calcium go inside the cell once it is stimulated. Some of these cells have L-type voltage-gated calcium channels located on the vascular smooth muscle, cardiac myocytes, and cardiac nodal tissue. Examples of nodal tissue include the sinoatrial and arterioventricular nodes. When this type of channel is stimulated, it promotes the smooth muscle contraction and cardiac muscle contraction, and it is also involved in the conduction of pacemaker signals. Calcium channel blockers, as the name suggests, prevents or reduces the opening of these channels. There are different classes of calcium channel blockers, but almost all of them act on the L-type voltage-gated calcium channel. Therefore, blocking or reducing calcium entry into these cells means inhibiting the calcium effects and thus causes the following reaction. Vasodilation. By acting on the vascular smooth muscle, calcium channel blockers reduces the contraction of the arteries, which causes an increase in arterial diameter. This drug primarily affects the arteries with minimal effects on venous vessels. Calcium channel blockers also has a negative inotropic effect. By acting on cardiac muscle, calcium channel blockers therefore reduce the force of contraction in the heart. Calcium channel blockers also have a negative chromotropic effect by slowing down the conduction of the electrical activity within the heart. Therefore, calcium channel blockers may affect the heartbeat. They also can exhibit a negative dromotropic effect by slowing down the conduction of the electrical activity in the heart. Thus, the conduction of velocity also decreases, particularly at the arterioventricular node, which can ultimately slow the heart rate. Therapeutic use. Calcium channel blockers are used to control a variety of medical conditions, such as high blood pressure, chest pain, and tachyarrhythmia. As an antihypertensive drug, the effects of calcium on the heart muscle is that it causes the muscle to act aggressively by contracting more forcefully. Calcium also stimulates vascular smooth muscle contraction, resulting in narrow blood vessels. This series of events many times can result in high blood pressure by preventing the entry of calcium into the heart muscle and vascular smooth muscle, particularly in the arteries. The heart muscle contraction will not be too strong and arterial vessels are able to relax and dilate, leading to lower blood pressure. As an anti-anginal drug, the word angina is one that you will hear a lot as a nursing student and a nurse. This is a fancy word for chest pain. The anti-anginal capabilities of calcium channel blockers is derived from its vasodilation and cardiodepressant effect. Dilation of the arterial walls reduces pressure, which lessens ventricular afterload, thus decreasing oxygen demand. And by lowering the electrical activity within the heart, it lowers the force generated by the heart to contract. Slower contraction means lower oxygen demands of the heart muscle. So vasodilation plus lower oxygen demands means better oxygen supplied to the myocardium or heart muscle. Another therapeutic use for calcium channel blockers is an anti-tachyarrhythmic agent. This is related to its ability to decrease firing rate of electrical activity of the pacemaker sites within the heart, but more importantly in its ability to decrease the conduction velocity and prolong repolarization, especially at the arterioventricular node. This action at the arterioventricular node helps block re-entry mechanisms, 
which can cause supraventricular tachycardia, which is a very fast, non-perfusing, unstable rate. Classes. Classes of calcium channel blockers have been divided into three different subclasses. The first class is dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers is the most smooth muscle selective class. These drugs are known to reduce systemic vascular resistance and arterial pressure, and therefore are primarily used in hypertension. Sometimes when these drugs are given to patients with angina, the vasodilation hypotension effects can lead to reflux tachycardia, which can be very dangerous because of the resulting increase of oxygen demand to the myocardium. This class of drug is a less desirable choice for angina. This class of calcium channel blockers usually ends with dapine. This drug class includes amlodipine, nicardipine, nifedipine, and novatipine. The second class of calcium channel blockers is known as phenylalkylamine. This subclass of drugs is relatively used to treat angina by reducing myocardial and oxygen demand and reverse coronary vasospasms. Unlike the dihydropyridines, phenylalkylamines causes less systemic vasodilation, therefore less reflex tachycardia. Since vasodilation is minimal, the major mechanism of action is more a negative inotropic, which means that the force of the contraction will not be as strong. This type of drug is contraindicated with beta blockers. This class includes verapamil, galopamil, and fendaline. The third class of calcium channel blockers is known as benzothiazepine. This subclass is an intermediate class between the phenylalkylamines and the dihydropyridines and have both cardiodepressant and vasodilatory effects. This drug is able to reduce the arterial pressure without producing the same degree of reflex tachycardia stimulation caused by dihydropyridines. It is also less negative inotropic than verapamil, but still should be used cautiously with beta blockers. This class includes diltiazem, which is also known as cardizem. Common side effects. Common side effects can include hypotension, headaches, flushing, constipation, rashes, photosensitivity. In rare cases, side effects can include arrhythmias, heart block, and heart failure. Contraindications and cautions. Contraindications and cautions depends on the class of the calcium channel blockers and the mode of action. Hence, individual drug studies should be reviewed. Patients having pre-existing bradycardia, conduction deficits, or heart failure caused by systolic dysfunction should not be prescribed calcium channel blockers, especially phenylalkylamines, due to the negative inotropic effect. Calcium channel blockers, especially non-dihydropyridines, should not be administered to patients taking beta blockers because beta blockers also decrease cardiac electrical activity and mechanical activity. And one major nursing consideration and teaching point includes the avoidance of grapefruit juice within two hours prior or four hours after the administration of calcium channel blockers because it may elevate serum concentration of the medication. Another major teaching point is that sudden withdrawal of the calcium channel blockers may exacerbate angina. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. After the video, be sure to look below in the description section because we have a lot more questions available for you. Question number one. Teresa, a 50-year-old, complains of having the following symptoms. Nausea, shortness of breath, dizziness, and a dull aching pain over the chest. Which of the following calcium channel blockers prescribed by the doctor should the nurse question? A. Verapamil, B. Fendaline, C. Amlodipine, or D. Galopamil? Answer. Since the patient is experiencing angina, the drug class that needs to be avoided is the calcium channel blocker class dihydropyridines, which is dangerous for angina because it can potentially become reflux tachycardia, resulting in increased oxygen demand of the myocardium. Options A, B, and D belongs to the calcium channel blocker class of phenylalkylamines, which is a more desirable choice for angina. Question number two. The nurse is about to give nicardipine to patient Ronnie. Upon checking the vital signs, the heart rate shows 70 beats per minute. Which of the following should the nurse do? A. Withhold the medication. B. Call the doctor immediately. C. Give the medication as prescribed. Or D. Wait 15 minutes before giving the medication. Calcium channel blockers should be withheld if the heart rate is below 50 to 60 beats per minute 
depending on your hospital's protocol or the specific physician's request. In this case, however, there's no need to call the doctor because the patient's heart rate is within normal range and the medication can be given as ordered. Question number three. The patient is receiving diltiazem for treatment of supraventricular dysrhythmias. The nurse noted a heart block on the EKG of the patient. Which of the following actions by the nurse is appropriate? A. Hold the medication, record the EKG result and notify the physician. B. Administer the medication, record the EKG result and notify the physician. Or C. Administer half dose of the medication and increase the IV fluid, then record the action. Or D. Hold the medication, record the EKG and notify the nursing supervisor. Diltiazem should not be given to a patient with sick sinus syndrome, heart block, hypotension, cardiogenic shock, and heart failure. This drug can cause lethal ventricular dysrhythmias. Since the patient is already having a cardiac electrical communication problem of heart block, giving diltiazem could increase the communication problem and therefore cause the patient more harm. Making option A, hold the medication, record the EKG result, and notify the physician the correct answer. All right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said, we enjoyed making it for you and we hope that it really helps you on your nursing journey. Um, whether you have not started nursing school yet or you are in nursing school now or you already are a nurse but you just wanna brush up on some information. If you did like the video, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, please leave a comment, let me know. I love reading comments from you guys. I feel like that's one of the best ways for us to connect. So anyways, until next video, I will see you again soon. I love you guys so much, bye.